In this video, I want to talk about how you can save money with your FileMaker Cloud installation. Now, if you've watched our previous videos, you know that FileMaker Cloud is the software from FileMaker which can host or serve your custom application through Amazon's AWS data centers. In fact, FileMaker Cloud is specifically engineered to work with Amazon's EC2 services. Now, what's interesting about FileMaker Cloud is that it takes a little bit more of a technical person to set it up. Now, in an ideal world, FileMaker would have made this as simple as possible, but it's a little bit more complicated. In fact, this video is here to help you save money. Now, at the time we're recording this, FileMaker Cloud's been out for a couple of years already, and we've got some good user feedback from it. In fact, some people have provided user feedback online. And so what's interesting about FileMaker Cloud is, one, it's a little bit technical to set up, and two, if you don't set it up correctly, it could cost you a ton of money, like accidentally a ton of money, where you're expecting a $100 bill a month or a $50 bill, you get a $2,000 bill. And so it's very important that you pay attention to this video, understand what you're getting into, otherwise you're likely to uh, make a mistake. So once again, talk to your local FileMaker consultant, watch this video, be aware of what's going on. So I've jumped on my browser here and I'm at AWS's marketplace. So this is where software companies or some sort of service provider has set up a shopping cart for you to buy services or products that are to be used on Amazon's data center. And so I'm gonna just do a search for FileMaker in here and see what I come back with. So I got FileMaker, uh, BYOL, which is where you bring your previous existing license. And of course we have a five pack or a 10 pack or 25 pack or 100 pack. And of course, if you want a specific number like a 15 pack or a 20 pack or a 35 pack, then you would contact FileMaker directly or contact my company, we would sell you a license and then you would go through BYOL and set up your own license and then do that. So in this situation, let's just talk about a five pack of users. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on five pack. And what you're gonna notice here, the reviews are very bad on FileMaker. And you're like, why are the reviews really bad on FileMaker? In fact, they added up to a one-star review not too long ago. The reason is, is people don't understand how this software works. They don't understand how to set it up. In fact, FileMaker, in my opinion, has made it too complicated. And I, you know, of course, I've expressed this to them. And of course, FileMaker does what it wants, which is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click on pricing. And you can see that FileMaker is giving you an estimated cost per hour. Okay. So once again, this is another area where I expressed a concern to FileMaker about them offering the software on a per hour basis. I don't have a single customer ever on this planet who ever used the software for one hour at a time or 10 or 12 hours at a time. It just doesn't happen. The problem is, is that if you set up the FileMaker software on a per hour basis, FileMaker is not going to calculate the hours that you are actually logged on and using the application. When you see a per hour basis, you say, well, if I'm in FileMaker Pro and I'm using the application, it should count that hour. It doesn't work that way. The way it works is if you turn on the server, which is a technical exercise, then it's counting the hours. It's like turning on the lights in your house and then you go out on vacation and you wonder why your electric bill's so high. Well, it's because you left the lights on and you left the building. It, once you start the server, that's like turning on the light switch. And so FileMaker doesn't auto start and auto shut down the server. Please listen to me when I tell you this, you want to switch to an annual basis right here. And so then you're down to this idea that it's four cents an hour, something like that. So obviously that makes a lot more sense than a dollar an hour, right? And so it's important that you don't buy the product on an hourly basis, you buy it on an annual basis. That's one issue you run into. The, the second thing that really pissed off a lot of people in FileMaker, it looks like they've removed this, is that they had a trial feature, a trial function. So FileMaker would allow you to try it out for 15 days. And you would start to use FileMaker. You'd start to use your application. Maybe you enjoyed it. You played with it a little bit. Maybe you said you didn't like it, but you'd forget about it. After 15 days, it switches to an hourly billing cycle. And instead of the system saying, hey, your trial is over. By the way, it's going to be a dollar an hour. And you're looking at a pretty big bill. Of course, this doesn't happen or they don't see the email. And so the thing just runs up this bill. So you start with a 15-day trial which should be free. And at the end of the month, you get a bill for $1,000 or something. It's insane. So of course, people would go back over here to the overview and they would trash FileMaker and justifiably so because it's unnecessarily complicated. 
So FileMaker doesn't have a simple way of providing a trial. It doesn't really exist. So even though they have hourly pricing here, that's like running into a field that's where the landmines are already sewn into the ground and you're running across the field hoping that you don't get blown up. So unless you want to be this guy getting blown up and getting a giant built in the month, you need to set it up for annual. Now, another thing you can do to save a lot of money is set up a reserved instance. Now, once again, this is why FileMaker Cloud's a little bit too complicated, but when you set it up, partially you're buying the software on a subscription and partially you're renting a server, a piece of hardware, on a subscription. Now, initially, of course, the server will be an hourly rate. Now, normally when you set up an Amazon EC2 instance, you're going to be getting on-demand pricing. This is the highest possible price. This is almost like an hourly price. And so you don't really want to do that. You What you want to do is pay extra and get a reserved instance. And when you do this, basically, instead of you driving a taxi around at the highest possible price, driving around town, doing your shopping, Basically, what you're doing is you're promising a taxi company or an Uber that you're going to use it for a year and you guarantee you're going to use it so much and they give you a big price discount. Typically, the discounts are at least half. And so typically what happens is if we go to reserve pricing, you see the prices will go down 37, 40% or maybe more. And that's on a, that's on a one year reservation. A lot of people will do a one year reservation. And of course, if you want a, three-year reservation, which is other kind of reservation, the discounts are even greater. So instead of having a $100 a month server or a $50 a month server, you're going to have something that's half that price or maybe even less. So you see the comparison right here, on-demand hourly price versus the hourly price of which you're going to pay over the course of a three-year term, right? Here you're paying half of a penny per hour, but over here you're paying less than two tenths of a penny per hour. So the savings are pretty dramatic. So understand that really there's two pieces here that are going to get you. One is definitely if you see an option for a trial, don't do the trial unless you're like a very organized person that will remember to go back and turn the trial off. Do not set up and do hourly pricing on anything. Buy FileMaker software on an annual basis and EC2 instance on an annual basis. Now, if this sounds like a little complicated and maybe something that you really don't want to deal with, send us an email at support at RC Consulting. I have a dedicated team of folks who do Amazon EC2 installations, and they will help you with this, and they will explain it to you if you want to have a conversation with them. So I'm Richard Carlton, and that's how to save money on your Amazon FileMaker Cloud server. 